a schizophrenic, it's the love that's in short supply. I think love itself that's in short supply. So anything that, gen that touches you and moves you to love is important to, uh, to, to, to focus on, I think. Yeah. And beautiful trees and, and nature and light and, and uh, this perception space we call our minds all generate love. I think we probably all come from light. It's a, I think the original spark in humans is a witness to perception itself. That's my theory about it. That, that light came and, and the eye was formed to witness the miracle of light itself. You know? So I think any giving thanks to light is, is a positive uh, generation. Ne kneeling in the sunlight and putting your head on the ground afterwards, before you start stuff like that, is a, it's tremendous when you feel you're afraid, but, but it often happens that you feel afraid in your, when you're alone in your room and stuff like that, so it helps to light a candle or something, or any light or something is, a, is light in the darkness of your emotions at the time, and you can open your heart to light itself. I love the planet. I'm the, I love the planet. When I touch the, the earth with my, with my uh, head, I can I feel the earth as a as a maternal and cult nurturing thing, a nurturing organism, and I love it with all its plants and its. And I love thinking about the big fireball in the middle of the planet, you know, stretching all the way down to the centre, which sort of hones your mind to realise what a terrible challenge it is that we face. That, that fireball we had to cope with and uh, learn how to live in love and not fret about the fire. No. For about 15 years I was walking the earth, feeling the centre of the core of the earth inviting me to, to, uh, to descend in an act of suicide to, the, to its darkness and uh, be tortured maybe in, in disembodied terror, you know. And, and that, that's given me a, a love of, uh, of reality and, uh, and permanence and security now. I mean, you have to respect the experience when, you, when, you, when, you're, when you're threatened with fire. It's a, it's a thrilling experience to be threatened with fire, it really is. How do you make yourself feel grateful and about life? Um, well, I sort of learnt from a young age, from growing up in the country and being around trees and fields and a lot of open space, that um, I just used to go off on my own and do my own thing. And it gives you time to think and sort of reflect on things that are happening. And it always had a positive effect on the way I was feeling. And if I felt a bit low or felt a bit angry or anything, it would always relieve those things. It was safe as well. I mean, I used to go off for hours on end on my own, just roaming around the fields and the oh, hills and that. So oh, just quiet from away from other people and that as well. What I do is feeling that with my hands and my head, that whole life for the whole, all the life that's that's in this in this ground at the moment. It smells nice. It feels maternal and alive, like a great living, great living bed of uh, nature. You know? It's Thanksgiving that soothes the anger, I think. When you actually start to feel thankful about things, mm. it, it's the anger that disappears. There's a load of anger in schizophrenics, you know. Mm. That I think it's because they find this experience so awful that there's nothing to be thankful for, mm. you know. Yeah. Not even food, because it's just no, nothing to be thankful for, you know. It's, mm. a, it's a real shame. Quite frustrating. Just, uh, there's no blame attached, I don't think, to feeling that life's not worth living, but... But I, I certainly do think life is worth living. 
in places like this and yeah. looking at the life here yeah it helps you believe that more I think yeah yeah it does yeah make an effort to see a bit of beauty in the world If I feel anger building up or stress, I'll just go for a walk to the park nearby, um, <clears throat> near our house, and just do a little walking meditation. With each step, you take a breath, so it's really easy to remember. So you, it's just about being conscious of your breath. So when I'm breathing in, I'm conscious that I'm breathing in. When I'm breathing out, I'm conscious that I'm breathing out, a long out breath. And I actually say that to myself in my head, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. And I take a step with each breath, so it helps me keep the rhythm. Really nice just to walk very slowly. And it's amazing, when you walk this slowly, you just notice so many more things. Just things on the floor, patterns, um, branches, colours, shadows. It's just fantastic. And you actually find that even though your mind is saying breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, and you're focusing on that, it actually suddenly gives you loads of space in your mind for, to notice other things things around you and even even to notice for example when you put your foot on the floor on the earth just to feel that feeling you tread on the earth very lightly and very you're very aware of of what you're treading on which is a lovely feeling and you know even sometimes you, you sense the sort of energy of the earth shooting up your legs through your feet and sometimes you stop and just look around, um, have a look at a leaf or something like that. But all the time, concentrating on your breathing. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Did you enjoy that, Nick? Yes, I did, yeah. I got uh, I, I moved into a kind of a, a couple of moments of awareness when I was, uh, after I was, I, I, started, I started to feel like I was prowling, and then I, then I lost that, yeah. and, and started to feel my breath and everything. And, yeah. and it was a, it was a sense of uh, slow motion yes. and growth, general growth with the, with the woodland. And all the thanksgiving for the year's sunlight is in those leaves. <laughs>